One of the many awesome features of Unreal Engine 3 is the ability to apply post-process effects to a player's camera just before a scene gets rendered onto a monitor. So essentially, everything is being calculated, all of the effects, anything that moves, all the pixels are already generated, and then right before they get blasted up onto the screen, we can tweak the pixels around to get some color change effects, apply various levels of blur, all sorts of cool stuff. So what I want to do is set up such an effect back here in the back room, so that as the player enters this area, the environment is going to start to feel a lot colder. We're going to shift all of our color tones to a much cooler spectrum. Now, let's talk about how we set this up. This is going to be done through a post-process volume, meaning we're going to create a volume, an area of space, which completely includes this back room, and then once the player enters that, then we can apply these post-process effects to their camera. So our first step is going to be to set up this volume. I'm going to demaximize this view, and let's jump over here into the top viewport. I'll go ahead and maximize that. And what we need is some sort of a brush which fills in this back room. So I'm going to tap the W key, and that's just going to hide out our uh, static meshes. Now, here's our red builder brush. Obviously, it's a little big for the purposes we have at hand. I'm going to build a custom brush to fit back here. To do this, I'm going to jump into geometry mode. So let's click the geometry mode button located over here in the toolbox on the left-hand side. And I'm going to switch to pen mode. Now, here inside the viewport, I'm going to do a couple of things. First off, let me change my extrude depth. It's currently set to 256, which means we're going to have a really low volume. Let's crank this up to about 720 or so. Now, be sure before you try to drag anything, before you tap the space bars, try to drag out your, your tool, that you come back over here to the viewport and at least nudge the camera. That puts focus back here on the viewport. Now, I'm also going to take my drag grid setting and pull that down to 32, which will just make drawing this a lot easier. And we'll start up here in the upper left corner of the view, and then down to the lower left corner, and then to the lower right corner, and then up to the upper right corner, and then right back to the beginning, and there we go. So let's demaximize this view. In fact, I can get out of geometry mode now. And here's our red builder brush. It's just a little bit below the level. I'm going to right click on one of its lower corners. And then here inside our side view, let me go ahead and maximize that viewport. I'll also hit W to hide away static meshes. And we'll just slide this guy up so that the bottom of the volume rests right here on the bottom of the floor. Now currently this volume doesn't quite make it up to the ceiling. That'll be okay. As long as the player can stand entirely within it, we'll be just fine. So now we can demaximize that view. We have our red builder brush currently surrounding our back room. We simply need to add our volume. To do this, let's right-click on the Add Volume button located in the toolbox over on the left-hand side. It's about three-quarters of the way down, give or take. Uh, let's right-click, and you'll see hidden in here Post-Process Volume. Like so. They're in alphabetical order, which is probably the reason why it took me a second to find it. So now let's get our red builder brush out of the way. I'll just slide that down. And now we have a brush that's surrounding our level. Let me actually jump out of our perspective view. And then here inside the front view, we can see this. It's a little pink volume that completely surrounds this level. Now, I want to play with this for a minute and show you some of its properties. In fact, let me go ahead and press F4 to open up its properties window, and you'll see post-process volume available as one of the categories. But in order for us to see what's going on here inside the viewport, there's a few things we got to do. One, we need to make sure that post-process volume previs is active here inside the viewport toolbar. It's a little reddish button with kind of a joystick look to it. Then to the left of this, we also need to make sure that game view mode is active. So go ahead and switch this on as well. Now, I'm going to take the properties window and I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit so we can see just a little more of the level. Currently, nothing has happened. We haven't changed anything for this post-process volume. Let's go ahead and expand its properties and expand settings. And there are a lot of settings here. In fact, if I stretch the window down a little bit so we can see pretty much all of them. Yeah, it should be all of them. There are several different things. I'm not going to go over each and every property, but there are a few which are pretty cool that you ought to know about. Now, it's all about enabling which, uh, which types of post-process you want to see. So currently, Bloom is enabled. Depth of Field is not enabled. That's uh, 
DOF for short. Uh, motion blur is on, but motion blur is always on. And we have enable scene effect, which is just going to apply an entire material. We're not going to use that right now. Now, let's go ahead and switch on depth of field. Now, if I switch this on, currently it looked like nothing happened. If you're unfamiliar with depth of field, it's an effect that actually stems from actual photography where you can focus your camera on a single object and have all the objects that are either receding into the distance or in between that object and the camera start to blur out. You'll see this used in movies a lot when they really want to draw the player's attention or <laughs> the viewer's attention to a specific pot. You'll also see it um, in games a lot as well. So we're going to take our depth of field, switch it on, and we don't see anything yet. That's because currently the depth of field focus inner radius is set to 2,000, which means we don't even see a blur effect until we get 2,000 units away from the camera, which means well beyond the range of our room. I'm going to pull this way back. Let's pull this down to, say, 512 and press Enter. And now you'll notice that objects that are greater than 512 units away are starting to blur. And as I move around, that blur moves with me which is pretty cool. And there's other set settings you can change as well. So if we take the depth of field blur kernel size, and we crank that up to something really high, like uh, maybe 96, then you'll notice we get a lot more blur back there. You can also almost start to see the cutoff where that blur is taking place, but it's pretty subtle. So you can have a lot of fun with this if you really want to make it look like maybe you're in a a room that's clouding up your, your vision or you know, fogging up your glasses. I wear glasses, so that's what I always think of. But we're not actually going to use that here. If you want to play with it, totally cool. What I'm going to do is disable depth of field. And there's a couple of other things I want you to take a look at as well. One of which is bloom scale. So currently, we already have our enable bloom active. Up here, you'll see bloom scale currently set to 1. If we take a look at these lights, here's a great example of light bloom. All these objects that are emitting have this kind of illuminated haze around them. We can boost this up if we want to by taking the bloom scale and kicking it up. Let's just triple it, for example. And you see those blooms got a whole lot brighter. And we can set it up to 10. You'll notice they just get extremely intense. Just be careful of this because you really can't push this over the top. So we'll go ahead and set that back down to 1. <clears throat> now, another thing that we can take a look at are changing the overall color of our level. Now, this exists down here in Scene Highlights, Scene Midtones, and Scene Shadows. So I'm going to expand all three of these. We can actually apply color adjustment to all three of these areas. To demonstrate it, I'm going to do something really crazy. Let's take our values. Now, I do want to mention this. Notice under Scene Highlights, we don't have red, green, and blue, or RGB. We have X, Y, and Z. In this case, X, Y, Z is analogous to RGB. So X is R, Y is G, and Z is blue. You just kind of have to keep that in mind. Now, let's do something just kind of really off the wall here. We're going to take um, X, and let's set this down to, say, 0.2. And we'll take Y and set it down to 0.2 as well. And we get this really yellow effect. In fact, let me swap that out. We're going to take Z. We'll set that to 0.2. And let me pull red uh, back up to 1. So now everything's got this kind of a teal color. Now let's take our midtones, and we'll take Y. We're going to set that to 0.7, and Z. We'll set that to 0.7 as well. So now we're getting this really crazy coloration taking place here. So you can see how these colors can shift, but there's one more thing I want to do. Let's take our scene shadows. Now we can really mess the scene up with these. Like if we take our blue and set this to 0.1, and take our... Our green, set that to 0.1 as well. See, now we get this really dark red look. And we're still getting this kind of you know, bluish, greenish kind of specularity off of everything. It's really kind of scary looking. But if we step outside of our volume, it just disappears. So boom, boom. In fact, let me hit the W key to get that mesh out of our way. So you can see the result. It just kind of pops on and off. Now, that would be really jarring to a player to be walking and then suddenly, blam, everything just changes to a whole different color. So we also have our scene interpolation duration property. By default, this is set to one second, which means the effects that we've set up would actually change over a single second. Let's give a quick demonstration of that. So if, I'm just going to right-click on the floor and choose play from here. Now watch as I enter the room. Over one second, we shift to this really scary effect. As I pass back out of the volume, over one second, we shift back. We can change that. So let's make sure that I reselect my volume once again. 
And let's get the red builder brush out of the way to make selecting that volume a little easier. There we go. Now I'm going to take that scene duration and just, or I'm sorry, scene interpolation duration. And we're going to change that to say, uh, let's try five seconds just as a demo and choose play from here. So now over five seconds, we shift over. So you can use that to really help the effect stay nice and subtle. So that's just a quick look at some of the properties of the post-process volume. Again, get in here and play. You can't really break anything. And if you did, you could always just create a new volume and start over. It's really, really easy to put together. So let's grab our volume. And I have some explicit values, which we are going to make use of. I'm going to take my bloom scale and set this to about 1.5 just to kick up the bloom a little bit while we're in here. Again, what I'm looking for is to take this area and when the player comes back here, I want things to feel just a little bit colder. Now, currently it's hard to focus because we have this really crazy system set up with this, you know, really odd coloration. So let me start off by taking my shadows and we'll set those back to zero. Let me take my midtones. We'll set all of those back to one and same thing with our highlights. So now everything's right back where it was. Now, there are some changes I do want to make to the highlights. We're going to leave X, which, again, is red. We'll leave that at 1. We're going to pull Y down to 0.8. And Z will also pull down to 0.8. And you'll see that kind of adds a subtle blue shift to everything. Now, for our midtones, we're going to leave X at 1, pull Y down to 0.9, and pull Z down to 0.8. And you see how that really starts to kind of blue everything out. Now, for our shadows, this is just kind of for the fun of it. You can opt maybe not to do this if you really wanted to, but I really want to show it off. So let me bring back the static meshes by tapping W here inside the viewport. We're going to leave X alone. We're going to take Y and set it to 0 .001. You have to be really careful with this setting. And then we're going to take Z and set that also to 0 .001. So now you can see that we've got this really kind of... It, it's just a cooler feeling environment. And if you want to see the difference, just come up here to post-process volume previs and switch that on and off. So you see we go from this kind of, you know, it's generally cool, but it's also fairly neutral. And now we're pushing that to a much cooler spectrum. Now I'm going to take my overall time in which this takes place, our scene interpolation. We're going to pull that from five seconds down to three seconds. Also, just one more setting I'm just going to throw in if you want to play with it. Scene desaturation. If you set this to 1, it'll push your level to black and white, which can be kind of cool. I just thought I'd throw that out there. All right, so we've got everything set up the way I want it to be set. Uh, let's, In fact, we could if we want to. We'd desaturate just a little bit, maybe give it a value of maybe 0.1, and that just pulls back a little bit of that color information. If I set it all the way up to 1, you'll notice we're purely black and white, which can be really fun to, to mess with players' heads, but we're not going to make use of it. So just a little bit of desaturation, and I think we're good to go. So now let's just right-click and play from here. So we enter the room, and over three seconds, we shift over to this very cold-feeling room. Our blooms get a little bigger. The overall feeling gets a lot cooler. It's not something we're beating the player over the head with. It's not really, really obvious what's going on. It's just after being in here for a minute, everything just feels cooler. And if we look back into the room, it even looks cooler in there too. But as we pass back into the room, you'll notice everything warms back up to this yellowish-orange light. So I can just jump in here, and you can see the spectral shift over about three seconds. So you notice the floor is kind of a pale green. The ceiling is really blue. All that yellow light kind of gets washed out until we leave that volume. So that's a quick look at post-process effects. By all means, play with this. You can have a lot of fun with these. Be sure to save your level, and that's going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.